you've built your leverage system mostly using virtual assistants instead of people here in the US. What's that experience been like? So I love it. So I started with one just back in August. So I mean, uh, what is that is, I mean, it's definitely less than a year ago. And uh, now I'm up to 13. um, And I'll be adding a couple more this month. It's like it's, it's really cool. Uh, I've created a culture like you're talking about Mm -hmm. within, um, you know, the virtual space so that everybody can kind of get to know each other. The first lady that I hired, she is actually now the office manager. So she's kind of grown with me and she has the right personality to go and then make sure that the teams are doing it. Cause I have multiple teams now. I have three Mm -hmm. teams within my division and it'll be four, probably not before too long. Um, So it's kind of neat to see that growth. But yeah, certainly outsourcing from the Philippines has been a great thing for me uh, because it's less expensive and I've been able to just really kind of capitalize on it um, because of, I guess I'm pretty good at the hiring process. I've enjoyed it so far, Um, but great people and they have a great work ethic too. And I know just in general, people sometimes have negative misconceptions about hiring from outside the States. Mm -hmm. Have you experienced anything in that regard? The biggest um, like hesitation that I hear is the language barrier. Mm -hmm. And I always tell them, you know, of course they're going to have an accent because they're from a different country. That's just going to be, you know, and we get plenty of that here in San Antonio, right? But um, they are going to speak great conversational English which is super important to be able to do that. Cause if you can't communicate well, you can't represent the business outside, but then you also have a communication barrier between me or the head of the company or whoever's hired them and the execution of whatever their task is because we can't communicate, right? So communication is the cornerstone of everything that I do. And I make sure that that's like the number one question. So that's the biggest objection that I see. And then trust, I think, is another understanding and trusting the world of virtual assistant hiring. Um, What do they have access to? What does that look like? And a lot of those things are very common between what we do here. You hire an employee, you got to train them, you got to trust them, you got to plug them into your things, and you got to monitor them. There is no abdication in entrepreneurship. You can't set something up and walk away from it and pretend like it's just going to be all fine. No, you have to supervise it somehow. And even if you have a supervisor, you still need to supervise a supervisor. You got to watch over these things. Uh, I'm a big fan of, uh, what do they call those, uh, audits. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Having audits done, bringing somebody in to take a look at things and how are things going. Bring somebody from the outside to do a fresh look at everything. Um, I'm actually going to plan on doing that around the August time frame for me is to just bring somebody in and say, I want you to take a look at everything that's going on, ask questions and just let everybody know we're going to have somebody come in and just check the temperature of things and make sure things are going good. See, I think that's such a great point because I feel like once people let go and they decide to hire an employee, one of the biggest mistakes that happens is they'll hire the employee they'll give them like a loose list of what they need to do and then it's figure it out on your own let them go and they never get checked in again because it's uncomfortable you know it's uncomfortable to check in on people sometimes and maybe they're afraid of what they'll hear or what they'll find or what they'll find yeah and so yeah um that's the thing too is you've got to have a um you got to set up expectations for your employees, just like anywhere else. It's really no different than anything else. So the, a person that comes to me and hires a virtual assistant and fails at it, I would tell you that they will most probably fail at hiring somebody in person as well, because it's not really that different, but there are limitations on virtual assistants. Mm -hmm. They can't go out and cut your grass. They can't go install the, the electrician stuff, right? They can't do these things. Um, but where they help is, you know, they have a tremendous that they can help with amount that they can help with, but it's really very, very similar in that you got to set expectations. You got to maintain accountability. You got to have training oversight. You got to project a great attitude too. Do they want to work for you? you? Would you agree that we're in a time where employees have a lot more say in that employee employer relationship nowadays, whether or not they're going to be working there. I mean, yeah, especially in a small business space, uh, there's a lot more options these days. I mean, and entrepreneurship itself is, is a lot more accessible. You've, you've got to find somebody who's excited about the, 
the job they're going to be doing and excited to work with you too. Yeah, for the long haul, you know, and it, how do you inspire people? I think that's a great quality of, of entrepreneurship is being able to inspire people uh, to follow you mm -hmm. and to catch that vision of what you're trying to do. You know, building my business around, you know, radio show and now podcast has been really, really good because it's such a great show. It's, it represents so well mm -hmm. and so many people watch it that it actually attracts a lot of the people that I'm interviewing. They're like, well, I want to be a part of this. They're excited. And that helps with that initial part, but then also maintaining that enthusiasm as we walk forward is super important as well. It's a lot of fun. I mean, I, I've really enjoyed being a, a boss at this level.